Welcome to the Network Engineering Video Blog. I am your host, Michael Crane. Uh, today is going to be just a quick video. I I uh, have a couple servers. I need to um, add them into the uh, DNS server. I have a couple new uh, VM servers, and and I wanted to uh, just quickly show you how you can use your your Cisco router as a as a pretty simple DNS server. Uh, I don't suggest using it as a really for real complex configurations. Um, I would prefer to use a standalone like a bind nine type server. But um, you know, for a small office, uh, you know, some static IPs, it'll get you by. So uh, yeah, let's get started. So we're going to look at our our network drawing and that uh, we created in a, the beginning videos and so here's this is going to be our router and and I want to put these two um, uh, servers in the uh, DNS lookup table and uh, and you know this is a small office we don't want to set up a you know real a fancy DNS standalone DNS server. So this is just something we want to just pop in here for just so we can just type in VM server or Windows 10 server without having to remember oops the uh you know the IP addresses of the boxes. So uh and this is kind of our, our network setup. Uh it's gonna be a little different uh the IP addresses are because this is our test um demo type uh network and this is actually going to be on my real office network because I, I have these two new boxes and I wanted to add them in there so um, okay so I dumped out the config and and really there's not this is pretty pretty simple to do um, uh, you should already have your DHCP uh, set up and and uh, I'm not going to go into setting this up maybe we'll do that later on the demo in another video but uh, um, this right here, this import all, I, you need to understand, um, will suck in. Uh, so like if you have a, uh, in my case, it's Time Warner Cable that's supplying um, internet access. It, it'll, it'll suck in all the, all the DHCP settings from Time Warner. And this command imports them all and then pushes them down the devices in, in my network. And then you add these other commands in here to override them. And and what we want to do is um, you need to make sure to add uh, these two commands. I, I'm not exactly sure you need this one. I do it just just as a matter of course. I, I'm not sure it's actually needed. Uh, but this one right here is. And, and what this does is it tells the server that this is its, this is, or it tells all the, all the DHCP devices um, that this is the uh, DNS server and what that's gonna do is this gonna make it hit and, th and this IP address is of our um, our router right here this isn't the, the Time Warner um, DNS server and if we didn't have this command in here it would it would get the Time Warner DNS server and we don't want that because we want it to look up uh, the domain names or name DNS names in this router first before it it looks it up in the Time Warner uh, DNS server. So um, so you need to add these two commands to your your DHCP pull uh, parameters, and that's what gets pushed down to the clients, uh, you know, laptops or whatever, anything that's using DHCP. Uh, this should already be programmed in your router, so you shouldn't have to change this. Uh, uh, you need this for SSH, um, uh, the RSA key, and uh, but these these are the these are the commands. Um, this is the these are the commands to uh, assign uh, host names. You'll notice that I put the fully qualified domain name in there and and that was actually needed i i tinkered around with this you know thinking okay well it knows the domain name is muxall.com you know why can't i just put host but uh you know apb dev you know for instance but uh, it didn't work and i got tired of screwing around with it so so i just put in the 
fully qualified domain name. And um, and there's uh, one other thing. It's uh, I'm not sure where it's at. It's um, let me search for it. Yeah, this is this this command right here is a global command, and and this tells it um, to turn on the DNS server. So um, so you'll need that added in there as well. So uh, yeah, so let's um, let's configure some of these guys in. So we we let me find out where we're at. Here we go. Okay, so um, well, you know most of mine's already provisioned. So the first thing you want to do is uh, let's uh, let's ping one of those IP addresses just to make sure we can get to it. So it's 192.168.1.15 is the first one. Okay, so we can get to it, and the name we want to um, give it is going to be um, uh, 15 as a Windows 10 server. So let's uh, let's do a ping. Uh, if you do a minus T, it'll ping it forever, and um, it will say uh, Windows 10 server. Oh, well, look at there. Uh, <laughs> this is probably a Microsoft thing. So, uh, yeah, that's that's very nice of Microsoft. Um, uh, well, hell, let's try our other one then. Uh, let's see, the other one was 17. That's also another Windows box, so it... Uh, oh. Well, see, this is why you, you have to ping them first, because this is probably a firewall or or something that is, is blocking it. I had to turn off the firewall in, in um, the VM server because it wasn't allowing ping, and, and I'm just going to do it temporarily for now. Um, I'll turn it back on when we're done. Uh, there, there's another way to, uh, to do a, uh, uh, a lookup in a DNS without uh without having to turn off without having to use ping and it's a uh, ns lookup so if you just type in i'm down in this bottom window down here if you type in ns lookup and just say vm server um you can see it can't find anything but if you do a ns lookup and type in uh, abp dev and uh, which we know is is already provisioned right here. Um, you'll see we get a response back from the router. So and that that's good. And we can also put in the the fully qualified domain name, and uh, it should be okay. Yep. All right. So um, yeah. So let's uh, we'll just do the uh, the one since the Windows 10 server seems to already be. Uh, you know, responding back to Windows 10 server, and and I guess that's a Microsoft thing. He's it's it's uh you know two Windows boxes. Who knows what what magic's going on underneath the covers with these things? And um and anyway uh um and, and of course you know Linux boxes and stuff. That's what these guys are. These are all Linux boxes here. So uh, that you know you can't rely on the Windows um, magic underneath the covers to to help you out so anyway uh, let's do the vm server and so we're just going to go up to our router right here and we're just going to do a config t and just say ip uh host uh, vm server dot um muxall dot com and just give an ip address uh, dot uh, one dot let's see what did we say that was going to be it was 17 Okay, now let's uh, ping it. Oh. Okay, so let's do an NS lookup. Let's see if the router even sees it yet. So it does see it. Oh. Well, hmm. Yeah, and this this might be another Windows thing. <laughs> so you can see it's it, the it's getting the right IP address, but for some reason, um, uh, Windows it isn't liking it. And I know that if you do a, a if config, it's not if config. It's a IP 
config slash all. I'm pretty sure this is set up DNS, yeah, save muxall.com. Um, let's find the DNS servers. Yeah, here they are right here. So, DNS server, 192.168.1.1. So, I, I know it's right, but for some reason, Windows isn't isn't uh, still letting me ping it. So, uh, let's try a ping vm server.muxall.com. Ah, oh, there we go. So let's just try ping in VM server. Okay, well I, I figured it out. So what I did, uh, just to show you, it was a Windows thing, of course. Uh, so I couldn't ping, you know, just VM server. I could ping VM server dot muxall dot com, but I couldn't ping just VM server. So what I did is I did a uh, and this is a Windows thing. I did IP config slash release, and and what that does that releases the. Um, I can show you up here, um, so I don't have to lose my connection to the router again. Um, let's see. Yeah, so here I did the here I did the IP config release, and. Then and then it released it, and then I did an IP config uh, right here, IP config slash forward slash renew, and that went and sucked all the information out of the um, out of the DHCP server, or renewed it, I guess, and uh, and then after that, I was able to um, to ping um, uh, just VM server without having to plug in the whole uh, uh fqdn so um so that's it that's uh probably a little longer than what i wanted uh ran into a few little problems but uh but uh, anyway that's uh that's about it i just wanted to show you um how that can save you especially if they're like printers or you know there's you know host names are a lot easier to remember you know, than IP addresses because, you know, dot fifteen, dot seventeen, they're pretty close. You you kind of forget, especially if you've got several of them like I do. Um you know, you forget which one is which and uh and so this just makes it a little makes your life a little easier and, and you can make these names even shorter than that. I, I try to keep them somewhat long so I can understand what they are, but um but yeah, you you don't have to do that. So uh, I hope you liked that. Um, if you did, let me know in um, the comments, you know, thumbs up, whatever. And uh, I'll see you next time.